Your body is amazing, but sometimes it needs fixing. All over the UK, there are special teams of professionals trained to tackle medical mysteries. The heart is the most important muscle in the body. Between beats, it relaxes and fills with blood, like I filled this tennis ball with water. And then when it contracts, it squeezes the blood out of it, forcing blood around your body. Now, just like squeezing the tennis ball, your heart pumping is hard work. And so to do exercise without getting out of breath, your heart has to be really strong. But not everyone has a tip-top heart. Every year, around 4,600 babies are born with a heart defect. This is 14-year-old Luke. He's one of those who's had heart problems since birth. So, Luke, tell me about the issues you've had with your heart. Well, Chris, I had four things wrong with my heart, and one of those was a hole in my heart. When your heart is working normally, it's incredibly powerful. Blood flows through its four chambers and is then pumped to every part of your body. But when you have a hole in the heart, there's a little opening between two of the chambers. This means blood doesn't flow as well as it should, and so less oxygen gets pumped around the body. What was the effect it had on your life? I was lacking in energy. Whilst I grew up, my friends got faster and stronger. I was staying the same, possibly getting weaker. Two years ago, Luke had major heart surgery, which allowed him to do more exercise. Oh made me fitter and stronger, so I've been able to get out there, do more things, and just enjoy myself. And now Luke is helping others by participating in research into how much exercise is safe for children with heart conditions. Dr Guido Pieles is running the research at Bristol University. Today, Luke is going to do some exercise under the close supervision of Dr Guido and his colleague Craig. This is the first time children's hearts have been monitored like this while they're exercising. Here we're looking right into Luke's heart, and then we see Luke's heart muscle, because after all, the heart is a muscle. Okay. And we can see this muscle contracting, relaxing at around 80 beats per minute. Luke also wears a mask so Dr Guido and his team can measure the amount of oxygen he uses. Feeling comfortable? Yep. Good. OK, so we've got a heart scanner, so we can take pictures of the heart. We've got the electrical trace of the heart, so we can look at the rhythm. And then we've got the oxygen mask on, so we can see how fit Luke is. Are you sweating yet? A little bit. <laughs> faint, faint drops of sweat. So your heart rate's now up at 115, so it's gone up quite a bit. Monitoring Luke's heart allows Dr Guido to see how well it's coping whilst exercising. There we've got Luke's heart again, and we can see that Luke's heart is contracting faster. Working much harder, but it's working well. As you can see, the ultrasound image on the left shows Luke's heart beating faster when he's exercising compared to the one on the right when he wasn't. And would you say he's safe to continue doing the kind of exercise he loves to do? Yes, because after all, exercise is good for our heart. It keeps us healthy and makes us live longer. If you have a heart condition, always check with your doctor before exercising. Although Dr Guido's research is only in its early stages, he's hoping to come up with some recommendations which will allow children with heart conditions to exercise safely, like Luke. Chris, can I trouble you for a favour? I need to borrow something of yours for an experiment. Is that OK? Yeah, that's fine. Whatever. Hang on, trouble me for what? Some of your blood? You've got eight pints of it. Absolutely not. I'm using mine at the moment. Yeah, but this is a once-in-a-lifetime chance to get it on telly. Ooh, this does sound good, actually. Great. Now, remember, we can only do this because we're doctors. Now, you might think I'm being brave with this needle, but you've got to remember that needles don't hurt unless you think they hurt, and I don't think it hurts. Nice work, Zand. I have to say, though, for all the vital jobs it does, like carrying oxygen around my body, it's not much to look at, is it? I mean, it's just sort of red and gloopy, right? Wrong! It is much to look at, but only if you put it in one of these. This is a centrifuge machine. This is my centrifuge machine. I've been looking for that. Stop interrupting. We're trying to do an experiment. By spinning Chris's blood around at high speed, the centrifuge machine will separate the different parts that make up blood so we can see them. And ten minutes later... 
So there we go. Now this top liquid layer is called the plasma and it carries nutrients around your body and also carries waste material that your body wants to get rid of. And underneath the plasma, you can see this red layer and that is made up of red blood cells or erythrocytes. And these carry oxygen all around your body. And also in there are the platelets and those are the cells that help you form blood clots. And right between these two layers, you can see a little bit of cloudiness. Those are white blood cells to fight infection. Well, there we go, Chris. We're all done with that now. Why are you giving me this? I only needed to borrow it. I'm a man of my word. So you've seen what your blood is made up of. But do you know where your blood comes from? Well, we're going to show you. Gross alert coming up. Amazingly, your blood comes from your bones. If you thought your bones were just solid, hard, white things that kept you standing up, then think again, because there's more to bones than that. Now, to demonstrate this, I've got a pig's femur. That's the big bone that you've got in your thigh. And we're going to open this one up to see how bones make blood. The femur is one of the strongest bones in the body, so we're going to need some very specialist kit to cut it open. Exactly. Right, Zand. Or we could use a medical femur saw. It's the only thing that doctors ever, ever use to cut bones. OK, we'll do it your way. It's time to saw open some bone. Chris the saw. Get ready, because this is going to be a bit messy. This is the inside of a pig's femur. And right here, this squishy stuff is red bone marrow. Now, it's the red bone marrow that makes all your blood cells. In fact, every single day, your bone marrow makes 500 billion blood cells. Busy. Now, the inside of your bones looks like this. It's pink with a lot of red marrow. But as you get older, your marrow starts to turn yellow. Chris, the yellow bone marrow coming right up. This is the inside of an adult cow's leg bone. This yellow bone marrow is a much lighter colour. It's very soft and squidgy, and that's because it's mostly fat cells. And this is what your mum and dad's bone marrow looks like. And that's because your body needs more blood when it's growing a lot. But as you get older and you don't have so much growing to do, some of the red marrow, which makes blood, turns to yellow marrow, which is basically a fat store. So you have more red marrow than a grown-up. But how does blood get from inside the bones to flowing around your body? Well, we're going to show you. Come and have a good look at this. Right there, between that bit of bone marrow and the hard bit of bone, is a blood vessel. So that's coming right inside your bones to pick up all that nice new blood being made by the marrow every single day. How cool is that? So we've shown you that inside, your bones are amazing blood-making factories and veins come right inside the bones to pick up that blood. And we've seen that blood is made up of different things, all of which have different jobs in your body. You know, Chris, I did have a sense that that chainsaw was a bit over the top. Did you, Zand? I could feel it in my bones.